Alright, welcome back. So, uh, left the house, went out. Uh, it was a pretty nice day today overall. Um, did not watch and hockey's kind of weird. Uh, but the hockey's back tomorrow night. But here I am. So, what did I do today? Well, I did listen to some NHL radio. And they were getting into the fantasy hockey stuff, which to me is kind of odd. So I want to talk about that because I do find it kind of odd. And then there was the fact, too, that it felt like, and this is NHL NHL radio on Sirius FM, uh, and, and it felt like it, it felt like the segments were drawn out. Like, there was one point where I actually said to my wife, I said, did they just say the same thing five different ways? And she said, well, yeah, they have to fill up the half an hour or an hour for the show, which might be one of the reasons I really, really appreciate YouTube, because I can just look at the camera, I can shoot a video, and when it's done, it's done. Uh, and it, it, it can be five minutes, it can be 20. When I did the video on uh, the 34-minute the video yesterday, I had no idea it was going to take that long. No idea. And I was like, all right, it took that long. That's how it works. But fantasy hockey is this interesting thing. And, and I do sometimes get people saying, well, when are you going to do some more fantasy stuff? I stay out of the fantasy stuff because it can be really hard to predict, especially if, as they were today on the show, trying to predict goaltenders. There are certain goaltenders who, of course, are going to be at the top. You're going to have Shesterkin, you're going to have Vasilevsky, you're going to have... Soros should have been higher, I thought, than he was on their list. But uh, there were a couple that I kind of found myself scratching my head at and thinking, I don't know if I'd put that person there. But that being said, um, it, it, goaltending is really hard to predict in the first place. And I'm wearing a Vancouver jersey because the one that stands out to me is Thatcher Demko. The expectation was Demko would have a really good year for Vancouver this year. The Vancouver would have a better year than they did. Demko had a rough start. He gets hurt. Once he came back from injury, though, he was great. But what's interesting to me is Demko also didn't feature in the top 10. I only got through the first 10. Um, and then I thought, okay, I've made my wife listen to enough hockey in the van. And, and she listens to hockey all the time. So I'm going to put on some music for her that she'll want to listen to. But the the reality is that if 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 you had this this same thing a year ago, it would have been well Demko is going to be the guy in Vancouver, and look at the finish they had under Boudreaux, and this is a really good team. So that's where the predictability it really isn't there with goaltenders. I'm going to do a video at some point, a madness video where I look at goaltending and how absolutely impossible to predict goaltending could be from one year to the next. I'll use Connor Hellebuck as an example. Hellebuck is pretty solid from a fantasy perspective. He gets shutouts, he gets good save percentage, he gets the wins, but from year to year it can vary, and um, it, it, it can be tough to predict. And of course, Olmark was the ultimate this year. Nobody saw Olmark having the season he had. Nobody. And it does feel like that was lightning in a bottle. I would not expect Olmark to do that again next year. Like I can, I like I haven't done you know best goalies, best centers, best defensemen, everything for years. It has been I think four years since I did that. I'm considering doing that again this summer. I'm considering you know sitting down. I'll go through all the advanced stats. I'll go through everything, and I'll I'll come up with a list also based on what I watched this year, and and just come up with a list and. That'll probably be the kind of thing that posts while we're on holiday, that kind of stuff, right? Right in the middle of the summer. And and so that kind of thing. But again, that can be really tough from one year to the next because uh, one example would be Jack Eichel. Right now, everybody's talking about Jack Eichel. Look at Jack Eichel. He's just, you know, great. And look at how he's doing. Right. And six months ago, it was all, pff, man, Buffalo certainly wins this trade. Look at Eichel. He's not doing squat for, for Vegas. When Vegas missed the playoffs last year was, well, there you go. Vegas is in trouble. Um, and then picking up Eichel was seen as a mistake. And now uh, he's he's seen as the Conn Smythe favorite for Vegas if Vegas gets into the final and wins it. Uh, but yeah, it is, it is this odd thing when you look at from week to week and month to month, things can change really dramatically. Another example would be right now, and I, I have to laugh at some of the... the the, the, the comments I've seen online here on the channel too with people saying well no nobody's really surprised by Florida we knew how good Florida was but going into the playoffs we did the poll on the channel and what was it 19 percent of people thought that Florida would beat Boston and you've got to figure a lot of those votes would have been for people who just hate Boston and can't vote Boston no matter what the button won't work so it, it is one of these odd things where it's well no that's not a surprise we knew but if Florida had lost that game five in overtime Boston would have won that series. We wouldn't have anything else to talk about on that, which is another video I'd like to do at some point. 
um, big long runs that happened because the other team wasn't able to close them out. Uh, but teams survived that big scare, probably in round one. And I'm thinking about looking at Stanley Cup champions and Stanley Cup finalists who almost got knocked out in round one. I think that would be a fun video to do. But I, I do look at speculation for next year, and especially, you know, with, with The Athletic and their article on, you know, what's going to happen three years from now, which I understand, and, and it's all fine and dandy, but I've seen way too many predictions of, we think this team's going to be a contender three years from now, and then they, they aren't necessarily. There's a lot that can happen over three years. But we still have, you know, the salary cap we know should go up by a million, but there's still the, the very slim chance it goes up by more than a million. Slim chance, but it could happen. Uh, and then there's trades that are going to happen between now and October. There's going to be trades that surprise us. There are going to be guys who are given away for nothing for cap reasons. And then there are going to be players who get big returns that we kind of scratch our heads and say, that seems like a lot to pay for that player, doesn't it? Uh, and then there's the free agency. Now, free agency doesn't have anybody who's really an earth mover on this year's list. Next year's list is loaded. Um, I've already told Yvonne next year is going to be bonkers. If some of these big names don't sign uh, extensions before next summer, next summer's free agency could be the most talented, deepest crop of players we've ever seen when it comes to free agency. So I, I think this summer is going to be fun and it's going to definitely affect things. But I, I won't even try to speculate. Like I thought the other day about doing a video on the 16 teams that missed the playoffs and which ones are most likely to get in the playoffs next year. And outside of Calgary, Calgary to me is the obvious one uh, because they should have that bounce back. New coach, new GM, and they weren't that far out in the first place and Huberto should bounce back. But it's hard to say. It's hard to say right now because we haven't gone through the offseason. We don't know who's going to go where. So it's one of the reasons why I don't get into the fantasy side of it and the speculative side either. As much fun as it can be to try to predict things. Um, even, for instance, uh, when I'm doing team previews this summer, I may end up changing how I do that as well. Uh, because, you know, when I'm trying to predict who's going to finish where in the divisions, it seems kind of silly to me because we haven't even started the season. I think a better way to do it might be, and I know the Hockey News used to do it this way 20 plus years ago, just grade it. Grade left wing, center, right wing, defense, goaltending, and just say, this is how I grade this team and we'll see how it goes. And so, you know, you use that grading system and absolutely the grading system that can then be used for people to say, well, clearly he doesn't think these teams will make the playoffs or he thinks these teams will. But I, I think that's one way to look at it. And then, you know, I can look back and say, this is where this was wrong and this is where this was right. Um, and it's going to be wrong a lot. That's one thing that absolutely is true of hockey. There is, I know people get mad at the randomness. There is some randomness to it. You know, whether it's a puck going off of an official that happens to end up on the, on the stick of a guy right in front of the net that buries it. Or maybe it's a situation where that puck just hits the post. It's just, it's so close. Or that puck, it, it crosses the goal line, but not completely, so it's not a goal. And there's just these moments where, you know, chance just, or just a little bit of luck gets in there. And so it makes it really hard to predict things, right? Um, again, coming back to Boston losing against Florida. If Olmark doesn't go out and cough up the puck in overtime in Game 5, Boston might still be playing hockey. They might be the team in the final. We'll never know. Which is something that used to drive me nuts as a fan. Um, I think the year that drove me nuts the most as a, as a Canuck fan would have been 03. I felt like the 2003, well, 92 as well, just because I thought the Canucks had their best chance that year. But 2003, it felt like those playoffs were wide open. It, it really felt like anybody could win the Stanley Cup. So when I see people saying that about this year's playoffs, and it does feel like that this year too, uh, 2003 absolutely just felt like anybody had a chance. If you're in it, you have a chance to win this. And it is special when you have playoffs like that, where it doesn't feel like there's there's two teams that are clearly on collision course in the final, and then everybody else is beneath them. I don't enjoy those playoffs as much. I still enjoy them. Especially if you get an upset in there that you don't expect and you don't see coming. Uh, the other thing, too, that's going to affect all the fantasy talk, because and, and with goaltenders, too, is coaching hires. Because um, you have coaches that coach offense. You have coaches that coach defense. And so that's going to affect the numbers. It might affect the ability of a play team to make the playoffs, too, if their style, if the coach's style clashes with the team, which is something I said with Paul Maurice with Florida. It felt like the way he was coaching them wasn't right. One thing that's been said during Florida's, you know, trip back to relevancy and finally being in a Stanley Cup final is that at no point during the season did anybody on the Panthers 
go to anybody in management and say, we should go back to the way we played last year, that we, we need to change our style because this doesn't work. They fought through it. They, they learned the systems. They got apparently quite good at it because now they're in the Stanley Cup final. So there's there's definitely storylines there. And that's that also is something I could definitely do videos on over the summer. Um, and one thing I noticed again on the radio, you know, NHL radio is the Toronto talk. One thing I will say for that is this summer, the Toronto talk is completely justified. There have been summers where I've been like, man, they're talking about the Leafs again. Why? This summer? No, it's fascinating. Um, everything that's going on, the fact that the MLSE board may have had a lot of say in getting rid of Dubas, the fact that, you know, Shanahan went out there and he was the public face of it, but is it really him that made the call? Was it somebody in, in you know, was the board got together and said, Dubas has to go? Um, and so there's a lot of speculation there, and his speculation ends great. And I keep the speculation off, you know, the news videos as much as I can, but some of this stuff is really fascinating. It really is. So that's why there's a but there, because yes, I totally understand why that's the topic of conversation this summer. Just like, you know, when, when the Boudreaux situation was going down, that was a daily thing where we were like, did Vancouver finally do the right thing and let Bruce go? Nope, not yet. Have they? Nope, not And every day it just got weirder and weirder and sadder for, for Bruce to have to go out there in front of the press when we knew, dead man walking. He's, he's not staying with the team. It's not going to happen. So I, I will say I, I think that the National Hockey League is one of the more interesting leagues, although uh, the NBA, the, the belief that the Boston Celtics could come back from 3 nothing down, that's something as well. And there are actual players that think they could go back from 3 nothing down, not, not Miami Heat players. Um, although I would love to see a Miami Heat player going, man, I think we're going to blow this. I don't know. We had a 3 nothing lead. What happened? I'm sorry. I know that's another sport. I'll, I'll come back to hockey. But... You know, it's it's one of those things, the unpredictability with the National Hockey League I like. Um, even when teams that I cheer for get knocked out, I'm fine with it because in the end, the best teams should play each other in the final. And I really believe that Florida came in as a number eight seed. Were they a wolf in sheep's clothing? Absolutely. But they got it done. And, and what I mean by that is just they come in as a number two wild card. Not a lot's expected of them. But they were a much better team than their seeding would 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 show um so yeah i just i wanted to talk about this a bit because i i just found it odd where they're talking about next season for goaltending and then throwing in there the reality that there are a lot of teams that their goaltending is in flux uh there isn't even a guarantee that hellebuck's going to be in winnipeg next year so as soon as you're talking about well i trust winnipeg more than nashville and i thought okay but what if hellebuck gets traded what will that do to his fantasy value then where will he go? Could he end up with, say, Carolina trades for him, right? Carolina's got Anderson's gone, Ronta's gone, potentially. What if Hellebuck ended up in Carolina? See, I could do the I could do the speculation thing too. Uh, and that would that would be fascinating. Because then what would Winnipeg ask for back if they were to make that trade? Uh, if you're a Canes fan, would you say, yeah, we would sacrifice Kachetkov if we could get Hellebuck? Uh, did did Anderson cost them that series against Florida? My answer would be no. But would Hellebuck be an upgrade on Anderson? Yes, I think he would be. So I, I, because, and I'm part of the reason I'm doing this too is because I was talking to Yvonne about it, and she said, you know, there's a lot of people who wish you did a lot of fantasy stuff. You get a lot of questions about fantasy. You may not realize how many you get. Um, I, I think there's a few reasons I don't cover it as much. It's because a, I don't do fantasy hockey myself. Um, I've, I did fantasy football. Like 20 years ago, I did some fantasy football. I, I never really stuck with it. And I also would never want to be in a position, and this is another reason why I don't partner up with any gambling apps or anything like that. I don't want to be in a position where somebody emails me and says, I lost $500 tonight because you said this was going to happen and these teams lost. And and even though I know somebody watching this would say, well, if somebody's actually, that's their fault, not yours. I still wouldn't want to do that. I wouldn't want to be in that position. I wouldn't want to be in that position where somebody says, well, I, I took your your suggestion and therefore I lost that money. So I, I won't even do that. Um, and then there's the other side of it too, where once you've partnered up, so let's, I, I want to go down this rabbit hole a bit too. You partner up with a sponsor. And so let's say I partnered up with, uh, with Sports Interaction. So I partner up with them. It's like, all right, Sports. And now that I've said it out loud in the video, I'll get emails from people connected with them that's how it works as soon as i mention norton antivirus as soon as i mention 
uh, VPNs. As soon as I mention anything related to gambling, I get all kinds of emails on, on my, my accounts. Oh yeah, do you want to partner up with this? Well, you didn't watch the video yet. You just, somebody said I mentioned you guys. But it, when, when I, I look at all these apps that are out there, and you've got all this gambling. And so let's say that I partner up with Sports Interaction, right? And you go out and you create an account with Sports Interaction and something happens. You lose your money. Sports Interaction says, well, we don't see on our end that we got that money. So something like that, right? Well, if, if you got into a really negative exchange with somebody who's sponsored, you know, partnership with the channel, it'll reflect on the channel as well, right? So one of the reasons that I'm I'm happy to partner up with Ben H Sports when it comes to jerseys is because most of the jerseys I have and wear I got from Ben. I know they're a legitimate product. I know he gets his directly from Adidas, um, and I know that he has been selling jerseys for longer than I've had the channel. And Ben and I email back and forth here and there, and we get along. And so I don't have a concern that somebody's going to have a really negative experience with him. And then it could potentially reflect then back on me because I made that recommendation. So that's why I'm really happy not to have a bunch of sponsors. I know people get mad about the ads with videos, but the reality is that those ads help to pay the bills. And, and that's part of, you know, I, YouTuber, that's what a lot of the income comes from. I actually did a video about it on the entertainment guy uh, about a week ago. And I, I appreciate being able to do that and to have that ad revenue coming in for obvious reasons. But also, um, I, I've never really felt like I found a sponsorship that really totally 100% works. Like to have somebody that I'll do like a paid bit for during a video that I'll, you know, I'll have them promoting me while I'm promoting them. Uh, bench clears, bench clears, I did something with them like four or five years ago. Um, I know they still use a video of mine here and there in their advertising, but I haven't had direct communication with them in a very long time, which is okay. It's not it's not really a, a big deal to me because again, I think the channel's doing pretty well. Um, I'm, I'm happy with the numbers and I'm okay with the fact that I don't have um, a bunch of paid sponsorships. I have nothing against channels that do. I know when I did the video a year ago, where I talked, where I, did, I basically did a mocking, you know, if I had a betting app and I, I made fun of it and I've done, you know, fake bets uh, during preview videos because preview videos, the, the view counts are usually pretty low. So I was like, ah, maybe this will drum up some views. It really didn't. So about a week later, I, I stopped doing that. But um, I, I, I did that because I felt like the, the, the gambling was way over the top. So uh, there were some that saw it as me, like, you know, throwing shade at others that are using, you know, the, the gambling sites for, for sponsorships for money. And I, I wasn't. I was just basically saying, you know, these apps are out there and they, they make it sound like, hey, you can bet and win. When the reality is people don't generally bet and win. If, if your website guarantees that everybody's going to win, your website's broke. That's just, that's not how it works. Uh, that's not how any of the businesses work. So when I see how many gambling ads there are between the National Hockey League broadcasts, whether it's Sportsnet, whether it's ESPN, TNT, all of it, it's all the time, right? Uh, who's going to win this face-off? Well, there's AWS to tell you who's going to, like, I, it just, it's insane. So it's, there's always, it's out there and it's inundating us. And that's why I made the video a year ago. Um, and I thought about doing an updated version of that. But then when I saw uh, people... In people figuring that I was throwing shade at others that were using that actual um, gambling revenue for themselves and for their business, which again, I have no problem with. I thought, no, I can't do that again. Because again, it'll feel like I'm doubling down that, oh, that's terrible and evil. Um, and again, just from, from my personal life, I have had uh, really negative experiences with gambling that affected family members of mine, where lots of money was gone because of gambling addictions. So again, and coming back to my other point with sponsorships, I would also hate to get an email from somebody saying, um, I have a family member that's addicted to gambling. And part of the problem is they watch your videos every day and you have this partnership with whichever gambling site, you know, is, is out there. And uh, they part, they're on that site now all the time and they just spent our rent money or they just spent the mortgage. They just, you know, we lost our car because of, and, and it's directly because. So that's one of the reasons why I stay away from it too, right? Um, I have very many reasons why I do things the way that I, I do them. 
Um, same as like, you know, being low tech and using the whiteboards. It's what I'm known for at this point. If I decided to go high tech and go with a whole bunch of other fancy, fancy stuff, I, I don't think that would necessarily work for the brand. I really don't. I have seen channels that I follow that are much bigger than this one that got new sets or got new new uh, production. And I'm like, I don't like that as much as what you had. I understand it's new technology and you guys are using it and you've got more money now and you guys can really make it look professional. But I kind of liked how it looked before. I kind of like how it felt before. So I, I don't want to be in that situation. I've tried to make sure that whether somebody watched a video of mine six years ago or they're watching it now, the experience should be very similar. The way that I'm talking to people should be very similar. Also, one other thing. Um, yes, in the comments, I can come across as snippy, but that's because in the comments, um, sarcasm doesn't come across. And, you know, I, I'm usually pretty short with my responses to people. And it, it's not, I'm never upset. I'm never actually angry in the comments because I've seen that. He gets really angry. I don't. I, I don't. It, it usually, just, just picture me kind of going, eh. So like the, the, oh, you missed this in this video. Eh. Or why didn't you talk about this? Well, I did. But you didn't actually watch the video. So, all right. Because I, I did talk about that. And I totally understand. With longer videos like this one, if people don't want to sit through it, got it. Cool. I have that experience myself. I'll load up even channels I like. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know that I want to invest that much of my time right now. I love you guys. You do a really good job. But I think I'm going to scroll over here and watch a music video instead. Or maybe the trailer for the new Barbie movie, which looks hilarious. But at any rate, um, yeah, so there you go. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I don't know what I'm going to title this. I'm going to surprise myself with the title, I guess. Uh, but I, I hope this this helps people, uh, you know, to if, especially if they're new to the channel. I used to do the new videos to like, oh, if you're new to the channel. I don't really do that anymore, but I guess this kind of qualifies for that. But... Yeah, things are things are pretty good and I'm pretty happy with things. I just I wanted to talk about, you know, the, the fantasy thing kind of got my head rolling a little bit uh, in that direction. I should really listen to more of the Sirius XFM um, NHL channel because it always gives me this sort of perspective on things. Uh, because I always get asked too, like, well, what other hockey channels do you watch? I, I don't. On YouTube, I, I don't. Um, I, I, cause I, I, and I've always said this too. I don't want to be on someone else's channel and hear them talk about something and think, okay, well now I can't talk about that cause they just did. I don't want to feel like I'm taking somebody else's material. And so I just make sure I'm just going blind and I'm just doing stuff that, you know, comes to mind for me. And, you know, it's not influenced by anybody else on the outside, even watching broadcasts now. There's a lot of times where in between periods, I won't necessarily watch the in between period stuff where I'll watch something else. Uh, and then, you know, I'll come back when the next period gets started. Um, and pregame, postgame, kind of the same thing where I just kind of stay out. I want to know who's playing and who isn't. The rest of it, um, I'm taking notes anyways. That is one, th that is one other thing. One other thing. The note taking in games. Because I've seen, I've seen a lot of comments like, well, he's got to be on the spectrum with all this obsessive note taking. It's a very good reason. When this channel started up, A, I didn't do previews and reviews. Uh, but then when I started, there was a lot of, you didn't watch the game if you think this. You didn't watch the game because you said this. And so I started taking notes. And then it became, well, see, if you watched the game, you wouldn't have wrote that down. So I just, the notes got more and more in depth. And now it's at the level it's at. And I'm, I'm happy. I don't see a lot of the, clearly you didn't watch the game. The one argument we can, and I, I agree with is, you watch the game, I watch the game. We may see it completely different. And that is fair. But I always wanted to say, all right, to say that I don't watch the games, that's something I don't, I don't want to be out there. And I would understand people speculating about whether or not I actually watch all the games. So that's where the note-taking came from. It did not start out that way at all. All right, now I'm done. I promise I will leave you. I will leave you for today. But thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. And uh, let me know your thoughts, uh, what kind of stuff you guys want to see. Uh, you can always email the, the hockey guy email address that's in the, the description of videos and all that. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for all your support. Um, really looking forward to this summer and, and getting all the playlist stuff going, which I've got to start getting going pretty quickly here.
because the summer will be on us before we know it. All right. Thank you guys, though, so much for all your support. As always, hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video, even though this would be a weird first video to watch if you haven't watched anything on the channel before. I will talk to you again soon.